Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this video, I'd like to give you an overview of one of my favorite types of content blocks inside Squarespace known as a summary block. A summary block pulls content from collection pages like videos and blogs and stores, and it's a great way to show related items or related blog posts on additional pages on your site. Each one of those collection pages has some different options and different ways that we can display their content. So I'd love to walk you through every single one of these options. Let's hop into my demo site and take a look. So here we are in my demo site. And again, this will work for any version of Squarespace. I just happen to be using version 7.1. Now these summary blocks will pull data from a collection page, a blog, event, a store, a video listing, but not a portfolio, really important to mention. You can have multiple types and different types of content. So let's go ahead and hop into edit mode and see what this looks like. I'm gonna select edit, and then anywhere we see this blue plus sign means we can add content. So clicking on that, I'm gonna grab the summary block. Now the first option we have here is to select a page. Again, we're talking about a blog, event, store, or video listing page, or video collection if you will, but not a portfolio. So if I click here, I'll see all of the eligible ones available on my site. I'm gonna go ahead and select blog. We'll start with that one. You'll see immediately the content of that summary block has been updated. So let's hop back here and take a look at some of the content we can have. Now it has primary metadata. Metadata can be the date posted, blog categories, tags, author, location, or comments that are posted on that blog. You can also have secondary metadata in case you wanna do a combination of category and author, or date posted and location, lots of options. This part right here is one of my favorite features. If you select filter items, you can narrow down by category or tag. This is a demo blog, so I don't actually have any categories or tags in there, but I use this on my own website to show related blog posts as a summary block on an individual blog post itself. I can have a blog post that features a mobile specific tutorial and then show a summary block that has any other tutorials also tagged mobile. So again, that's under filter items. You can select category or tag, super helpful to show related content on a blog post. That's how I use it. Now under design is where we get to work with what's actually displayed. So here we have it set as the wall type. You can also have carousel where you can see these little arrows pop up and you can scroll through the content. You can also have a list which lists all of the content out. And then you can have a grid which shows them side by side. Wall is a little more adaptable to different size thumbnail images. You'll notice that in the icon there. Grid will keep all of the images in the same aspect ratio. So if you want all the thumbnails to be the same size, select grid and you can change that aspect ratio. If you want a list of all the items, you can also adjust the aspect ratio there, but they won't be side by side. It'll be one per row. And then carousel, again, we can adjust the aspect ratio, but it will only show a few. This gives you the option to toggle through a few items. That's where you're gonna find those arrows in the carousel, okay? Now, after that, we have number of items and item per row, pretty understandable. Wall isn't going to have that. It'll just have number of items, but wall will just display the amount of content. It won't have specific rows in case your thumbnails are in different sizes. It might create one large one and two smaller ones. It'll change the layout, so rows aren't specified in a wall. In a carousel, they are. In a list, they aren't, and in a grid, they are also not specified either. It'll put as many as it needs to based off of the number of items. Now, after that, again, we talked about the aspect ratio. Text alignment and size is pretty straightforward, but underneath here is where you'll find different elements. For a blog post summary block here, we'll have title, featured image, excerpt, read more link, and then the opportunity to move that metadata above or below the title or content. I want you to notice price is only available for products as well as quick view, but this read more link is only available for blogs. No other collection page will have a read more link. When I turn this on, it gives you the prompt of read more and has the little arrow. Again, that is just for blogs. Now after that, we have size and spacing column and gutter width this will be a little bit different depending upon alignment but column width is you guessed it the width of the columns for the content we're showing and then gutter width if you'll notice that changes the actual amount of space between the items there so definitely play around with that size and spacing until it looks perfect for your own website i'll show you one last time how we added this let's go and delete this block and we'll add from a different collection page okay i'll click the plus sign we'll click on summary let me pull this over here there we go. 
Under select a page, let's go ahead and grab event. We'll go for our event listings and we'll go back. Scrolling down here, this is a little bit different for events. We can add the time frame if we want upcoming or past events, then metadata, and again, we can filter the items by category or tag. Going back here, we can also select design, and again, we have wall, carousel, which will give us the arrows to click through, list, which will display every single item one at a time, and then grid, which displays items side by side. You can adjust the number of items and let's go back to carousel here. You can also adjust the number of items per row. If we reduce this down to two, then we'll only show two at a time and we'll need to scroll through to see more. Aspect ratio is only going to be visible for that thumbnail for carousel, list, and grid. In the wall setting, you can't change the aspect ratio of the images. It will be the size of the thumbnail. Text alignment is pretty straightforward. Title, featured image, and excerpt. Again, a read more link. It's just for blogs. Price and quick view, just for products. Under size and spacing, that's where you adjust the width of the columns and the width between the items. Definitely customizable there. But one last time, under content, you can select any collection page that's an event, a store, a video, or a blog, not a portfolio. Whatever you decide to go with, just select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for your overview of summary blocks, one of my favorite types of content blocks available in Squarespace. Now, outside of that standard design menu that we've been playing around with there, there are a ton of cool things that you can do to customize the look of these summary blocks using code. I have an additional tutorial that covers all kinds of fun stuff listed in the description below. So check out those related links and learn how to customize your summary block so it looks even cooler on your Squarespace website. Now, if you liked this video, give me a like and comment below and be sure to subscribe because I post a brand new tutorial all about Squarespace every single week. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.